James Joseph Gandolfini Jr. was an American actor. He was best known for his portrayal of Tony Soprano, the Italian-American mafia crime boss, in HBO's television series The Sopranos. For this role, he won three Emmy Awards, five Screen Actors Guild Awards, and one Golden Globe Award. Wikipedia Born, September 18, 1961, Westwood, New Jersey, United States. Died, June 19, 2013, age 51 years, Rome, Italy. Buried, June 27, 2013, the Cathedral Church of St. John the Divine, New York, United States. Height, 1.84 meters Spouse, Deborah Lynn, meters 2008-2013, Marcy Wodarski, meters 1999-2002, Children, Michael Gandolfini. James Gandolfini was born in Westwood, New Jersey, to Santa, Penna, a high school lunch lady, and James Joseph Gandolfini, senior bricklayer and head school janitor. His parents were both of Italian origin. Gandolfini began acting in the New York theater. His Broadway debut was in the 1992 revival of A Streetcar Named Desire with Jessica Lange and Alec Baldwin. James' breakthrough role was his portrayal of Virgil the Hitman in Tony Scott's True Romance, 1993, but the role that brought him worldwide fame and accolades was as complex mafia boss Tony Soprano in HBO's smash hit series The Sopranos, 1999. He died unexpectedly of a heart attack in 2013 while vacationing in Italy. Family Spouses Deborah Lynn, August 30, 2008 to June 19, 2013, his death, one child. Marcy Gandolfini, March 20, 1999 to December 18, 2002, divorced, one child. Parents Santa Gandolfini James James Gandolfini Trademarks Best remembered as mob boss Tony Soprano from The Sopranos, 1999 Frequently played characters who are brutish yet charming Discreet smile Large, chunky bear-like frame Nasal New Jersey accent that grew deeper over the years Trivia Known to be a shy man, uncomfortable being a celebrity on an episode of Inside the Actor's Studio, 1994, he mentioned banging his head against a wall, getting very little sleep, and putting a pointy rock in his shoe as techniques to get really angry while shooting The Sopranos, 1999. Upon finding out that he was the only actor on The Sopranos, 1999 to 2007, receiving a cut of the proceeds from DVD sales, he called every other cast member into his trailer and cut each a check for thousands of dollars from his amount. He played the trumpet and saxophone. Was very uncomfortable performing violent scenes on The Sopranos, 1999, and would sometimes stop during the middle of shooting a scene when he was unable to continue. Very press shy, he was known for often declining interviews. He believed that there were more interesting celebrities to interview. Was on vacation with his son at the time of his passing. He and his son were celebrating his son's graduation from junior high school. Used to bartend in Manhattan during years as struggling actor. Was considered for the role of Vincent Vega in Pulp Fiction, 1994, which went to John Travolta. Said he was nothing like Tony Soprano in real life, describing his own personality as being more like a 260-pound Woody Allen. Lost more than 40 pounds for his role in The Mexican, 2001, but had to gain it all back before shooting for the HBO series The Sopranos, 1999 because executives did not believe the audience would like a skinny Tony. Despite having gained fame for playing brutal and violent characters, his friends and co-stars have said that he was the complete opposite in real life, being very thoughtful, soft-spoken and all-around nice person. On June 19, 2013, he suffered a fatal heart attack in his ancestral nation of Italy. He was 51 years old at the time of his heart attack was good friends with John Travolta. John's father sold tires to his father, has two children, a son, Michael Gandolfini, born 2000, with his first wife, Marcy Gandolfini, née Wadarski, and a daughter named Liliana, born October 2012, with his second wife, Deborah Lynn. Was voted best-looking in high school. 
well trained in Krav Maga, an Israeli style of martial arts, which he practiced for two and a half years. Once worked as a bouncer. Became close friends with his The Sopranos, 1999, co star Lorraine Bracco, during the filming of the HBO series. During her close ups, during their scenes, he would moon her to try and put her off. This was confirmed during James' interview on Inside the Actor's Studio, 1994. Although he often played thuggish or brute characters, he was actually somewhat of a pacifist offstage, he had reservations about continuing his production contract as Tony Soprano in The Sopranos, 1999, due to the series' violent content and stereotype of Italian-Americans. Television mobster Gandolfini turned to the right side of the law when he saw a woman being mugged in New York recently. Passersby were shocked to see the tough guy step in and rescue a woman when she was knocked down and had her bag snatched whilst walking down a dimly lit street. The film Her, 2013, was dedicated to his memory. Financed the construction of a restaurant called Vines in Onionta, New York for his childhood friend Clive Griffiths, who needed the money to launch it. Originally cast in the role of Carl Hammerty in Catch Me If You Can, 2002, but had to drop out due to The Sopranos, 1999. He was inducted into the 2014 New Jersey Hall of Fame in the arts and the entertainment category. Did not start acting until he was in his mid-twenties. Had an estate worth $70 million at the time of his death. His parents spoke Italian at home. Was considered for the role of Ben Grimm slash The Thing in Fantastic Four, 2005, which went to Michael Chiklis. Had often said Robert De Niro played a considerable role in his decision to become an actor, since Gandolfini had grown up watching Mean Streets, 1973, over and over again. Fittingly, in E.T., 2013, HBO announced that De Niro had been chosen to replace Gandolfini in the television lawyer's role he had signed to play the lead of the drama miniseries The Night Of, 2016. It's slated for production in time to premiere in summer 2014. For his role as Eddie Poole in 8 mm 1999. Gandolfini met a variety of real porn directors and producers to get a feel for their line of work and to get a taste of their personalities, and is said to have loosely based his character on several of them. Nominated for the 2009 Tony Award for Best Performance for a Leading Actor in a Play for God of Carnage. Attended Rutgers University in New Brunswick, New Jersey. He first became interested in acting after attending an acting class with a friend, and subsequently studied the Meisner technique under Catherine Gately for two years. Has co-starred with John Travolta in five movies, Get Shorty, 1995, She's So Lovely, 1997, A Civil Action, 1998, Lonely Hearts, 2006, and The Taking of Pelham 123, 2009. Was in attendance at Chris Penn's funeral has played Ida Torturo's father in Romance and Cigarettes, 2005, and her brother in The Sopranos, 1999. Has co-starred with Brad Pitt in three films, True Romance, 1993, The Mexican, 2001, and Killing Them Softly, 2012. Has co-starred with Denzel Washington in three movies, Crimson Tide, 1995, Fallen, 1998, and The Taking of Pelham 123, 2009. Attended and graduated from Park Ridge High School in Park Ridge, New Jersey, 1979. Was introduced to acting by his friend, Roger Bart, after accompanying him to a class. He strongly disliked doing interviews. His sister Johanna is a prominent official with the New Jersey family court system. Has appeared in four films directed by Tony Scott, Crimson Tide, 1995, The Last Boy Scout, 1991, True Romance, 1993, and The Taking of Pelham 123, 2009, has co-starred with Gene Hackman in three films, Crimson Tide, 1995, Get Shorty, 1995, and The Mexican, 2001. In Crimson Tide, 1995, James refers to Robert Mitchum and Cary Grant, two actors he also references in The Sopranos, 1999. Was friends with former New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani. Named one of E.S. Top 20 Entertainers of 2001. Became engaged to Laura Somoza in January 2004. 
broke up, amicably, in February 2005. James Gandolfini passed away on June 19, 2013, three months away from what would have been his 52nd birthday on September 18. Jeff Daniels, Hope Davis, Marcia Gay Harden and he were awarded the 2012 Backstage Garland Award for Ensemble for God of Carnage at the Amundsen Theater in Los Angeles, California. Was close friends with Karen Duffy since childhood, Gandolfini was one of the actors considered for the role of Don Lino in Shark Tale, before Robert De Niro was cast. Often worked with Tony Scott. Became engaged to Laura Somoza. Became engaged to Laura Somoza. He worked with Tony Scott on four films, and his nephew Jake Scott on Welcome to the Rileys, 2010. In Crimson Tide, 1995, he played an officer on the USS Alabama. In True Romance, 1993, he beats up a woman named Alabama, played by Patricia Arquette. Both films were directed by Tony Scott. Quotes I'm a neurotic mess. I'm really basically just like a 260-pound Woody Allen. I'm an actor. I do a job and I go home. Why are you interested in me? You don't ask a truck driver about his job. I was voted best-looking kid in high school, but, as you can see, things changed. I used to say I was a 260-pound Woody Allen. You can make that 295 pound now. On why he rarely does interviews, I just don't think I'm that interesting. I don't think what I have to say is that interesting. To hear me go, blah, 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 blah. On his reaction to The Sopranos, 1999, pilot script, I thought, I've never been the lead before. They're gonna hire somebody else. But I knew I could do it. I have small amounts of Mr. Soprano in me. I was 35, a lunatic, a madman. On ending The Sopranos, 1999, it's been a great opportunity, but I don't have much trepidation about it ending. I think it's more than time. Part of the fun of acting is the research, finding out about other people. As much as I've explored this guy, I don't know what else to really do with him. I've been in one place for ten years. That's enough. It's time for me to do other things. Alan Alda was with M. A. S. H., 1972, so long, and now you see him, that's not there that much anymore. In my mind, you work hard, you'll be fine. Everybody's got their baggage. Like I always say, I'm standing on my parents' shoulders, they allowed me to do this silly job. I love hearing people laugh. Especially in New York, and especially now. To hear somebody out there just belly laughing. On Tony Soprano, his character on The Sopranos, 1999, I never think about him, ever. I watch stupid comedies. Role Models, 2008. I love them. The Rocker, 2008. I love that. I like idiotic comedies. On the final episode of The Sopranos, 1999, when I first saw the ending, I said, What the fuck? I mean, after all I went through, all this death, and then it's over like that? But after I had a day to sleep, I just sat there and said. On his The Sopranos, 1999, co-star, Edie Falco, I'm still in love with Edie. And, of course, I love my wife, but I'm in love with Edie. I don't know if I'm in love with Carmela, or Edie, or both. I'm in love with her. I'm much more comfortable doing smaller things. I like them. I like the way they're shot, they're shot quickly. On acting, it is an odd way to make a living. Putting someone else's pants on and pretending to be someone else is occasionally, as you grow older, horrifying. I dabbled a little bit in acting in high school and then I forgot about it completely, and then at about 25 I went to a class. I don't think anybody in my family thought it was an intelligent choice. I don't think anybody thought I'd succeed, which is understandable. I think they were just happy that I was doing something. On The Sopranos, 1999, Project, I read it. I liked it. I thought it was good. But I thought they would have to hire some good-looking guy, not George Clooney, but some Italian George Clooney, and that would be that. But they called me and they said can I meet David Chase for breakfast at 9 a.m. 
At the time, I was younger, and I stayed out late a lot, and I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. This guy wants to eat breakfast? This guy's going to be a pain in the ass. I think you cared about Tony, because David was smart enough to write the Greek chorus through Dr. Melfi, so you sat there and you got to see his motives, what he was thinking, what he was trying to do, what he was trying to fix, what he was trying to become. And then you saw it didn't really work out the way he wanted it to. If you took the Melfi scenes away, you wouldn't care about this man as much, or care about anything that was happening to him. We'd get accused, back then, of glamorizing mobsters, but we were all half miserable you know. I don't think the violence looks appealing at all. Everybody paid for it in a lot of ways. I heard sometimes that we were making cute, cuddly mobsters, but I know for a fact that David wrote an incredibly violent episode, the one where there's a stripper that Ralph Sifaretto beats to death, and I think that was written as a reaction to that. It's a very violent world, and, you know, there's consequences. I think we showed it, and I think we showed the toll it takes on people. Salaries. The Last Castle, 2001, $5 million. The Sopranos, 1999, $13 million, Season 5.